I got this. Hello. Hi friends, welcome to part two of my mega first session back after lockdown. If you haven't seen part one yet, go take a squiz right now. Otherwise, let's continue on with our one. So by now it was around lunchtime and we were starting to get a little fatigued so opted for something that focused more on technique. Alex showed me this spherical slabby climb that he had previously tried which really intrigued me. This climb looked visually simple with its uniform shapes and here's Alex giving it a go. Honestly, so well climbed, Alex. He totally crushed that. And here's me giving it a go. For me, this was a climb that looked simple, but with so many hold options made the problem solving a lot harder. Despite being a slab climb, the slopiness of the holds meant that I really needed to find the right body position so as to not knock myself off the wall since every time my knee turned back into the wall, it would push me out and so I had to tense even harder to try to keep my hips in. Hi. I got this, but I also found this person. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Hello. And found that person. <laughs> Let's try that one again. Here, I am really struggling with keeping myself on the wall. My feet keep barn dooring back into the wall as I am compressing with my arms, so there's not a lot of room for too much movement without pushing against my own momentum or falling out. I remember feeling very tired throughout the course of this project. Okay, now the jumper is coming off so I can begin to focus on refining my beta to find the most efficient route. 
I thought my commitment level was solid, but too bad I didn't hold on tight enough to that circular sloper. Great commitment! Okay, that's too much concentration on the same climb for now. Time to break it up with a new problem. This climb was a little less slopey, so I had a bit more hope. the mantle with a high foot rather than place it on the feature to the right. Alas, you gotta do what works for you. Okay, let's get back to my slopey number. definitely losing confidence here as I already thought the jump was too far away. Come on Grace, you've got this. Just kidding. I really did try my hardest at that time. Okay, except I completely forgot that this little foothold exists. Whoops. Can't get them all, but upon reflection, definitely tested my commitment to jumping to slippers, which I'm pretty happy with. Alright, I will pause on this one for today. Continuing on with this spicy toe hook number, which of course is something that I enjoy, especially if it's got a nice juggy hold to go to, as displayed here. Although this climb also required dynamic commitment, it was in short bursts to relatively juggier holds, so you can definitely see my increase in confidence here. Honestly, I can't stop throwing myself at dinos either. I feel so inherently bad at them, so I just keep trying them to push my limits, but I think I'm actually okay at dinos now, which is great. Yay. Come on, 
heard this thing, I was thinking about why I could do it. Then I got baited by Alex again to try out this other type of dino. I know, you'd think I'd be exhausted from jumping around everywhere, and believe me, I am. I just have no idea how I'm still going, but I am, so let's just keep running with that one. Anyway, this dino was a sort of downward dino where you'd have to over jump so that you sort of land quietly on your feet at the volumes. It seems so impossible, so I really did try to challenge myself to try really hard to commit because why not and also I've never successfully done a climb like this before. As you can see, Alex is really committing here and watching him give an example of that commitment really helped to give me a little more confidence on how much I should be committing. The main thing that I learned from trying this climb was that the more I overcommitted and believed in myself, the more likely I was to get it. And that's just the whole principle with dinos in my opinion. But the commitment part is scary and when you're hanging by your arms and in that moment it can be really tricky to convince yourself otherwise because honestly I'm there all the time. For me, I realized that I kept landing on the right side of the feature, which is angled slightly to push me back. Alex was consistently landing on the left side of the feature, which looked a lot more stable. So although we did not get there in the end, I realized in retrospect that I could have dinoed leading first with my hips into the wall. And I think that would have definitely helped with landing in a better place. But it's also so tricky when you're there because you're not really thinking about committing extremely at least I wasn't because I was so scared. Getting used to the dyno and the body positions really helped increase my confidence to commit further in the end. So one day I'll hopefully be able to get a climb like that. Like the insane people we are, the final climb of this session was, yep, you guessed it, another dyno. This involved two parts, firstly jumping to a jug, then running across three more features right into another jug. This is where my focus on footwork and commitment to features was really challenged.
I swear most of this climb was just me getting used to the wall and the movement and pushing myself a little more each time. To be honest, forcing myself to use features more and more made them feel a little less scary, which made the climb more approachable. But if you ask me how I did the running part from a technical angle, I honestly have no idea. I really just got there and ran for my life, just hoping to catch the next jug because it's actually really quite nice. It was really thrilling, but also a great climb to end on. I was honestly very surprised with myself since all I'd done in the second half of the session was dinos and I hadn't been climbing for a while so I was pretty impressed with my own commitment levels. What is going on with this man? <laughs> the gang is back and we've got a special guest, Rami! <laughs> How long did we climb for today, Alex? Well, what time is it now? It is 4 o'clock. Jesus, it's actually oh my god. <laughs> so, we've been here for six hours. I think six we made the hours. we made the most of our first day back. Oh I my think. god. How does it feel to be back in the gym, Grace? It feels great. <laughs> and I cannot wait to climb more. Yay! But I'm we're back so tired. <laughs> I'm actually dead and I will suffer tomorrow. I think that's everyone. Thank you very much for climbing in the Alex. Save the climb we made, Grace. We did it was a great. lot. Look forward to the next set. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, bye! bye. So just to recap. So we made it. 16 climbs over six hours, which is an incredibly mega sesh. But hope you enjoyed the climbs that we tried and let me know down in the comments below which one was your favorite or which one looked most interesting. As always, thank you so much for your support and thank you for stopping by. I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you in the next one. Have a lovely day. Bye. If you've got a song inside, don't hide it, don't lock it. Hey.